Hi, and welcome again to Tom's Hit Parade. You know, I'm not sure what gives with this month. It, uh, I've been feeling kind of uninspired lately when it comes to this channel. Uh, not really eager to, uh, to do videos. It almost feels like I've been phoning it in, and I'm not sure what's going on with that. I, I hope it's just a passing phase and that uh, things will get better uh, as the winter rolls on. I, I'm, I've, I've got a couple of a at least one collaboration coming up very soon that I'm really looking forward to, and I'm already working on my year-end lists. Yes, plural. There will be more than one list. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm sure that in very short order I will be back to my to my old enthusiastic self when it comes to my channel. Uh, but anyway, uh, for now, for lack of any better ideas, uh, I thought I would give you a little tour of my CD collection. Uh, it's not going to be an exhaustive tour. I'm not going to go over, you know, every single CD one by one, because for one thing that would take uh, hours. I've got more than 2,300 CDs, so uh, that would just be totally uh, time-consuming and labor-intensive. But also because I don't want to reveal all my CDs to you, because I hopefully I will continue to give you surprises, you know, introduce you to stuff that you've never heard of before and uh, something, things that might surprise you. So uh, anyway, but I will start off conveniently enough at the beginning. Uh, I started buying CDs back in 1989 and uh, there was a chain store, a uh, store of about, it was about two dozen stores in the Southern California area. They were called Music Plus and the receipts that uh, they would give you had the, where they were computer printed receipts. They had the title and artist of each CD on the receipt. So, and if I'd known I'd been doing, th I'd be doing this YouTube channel all these years later, I would have saved those receipts instead of throwing them out a few years after I'd started collecting them. And yes, I did collect them for a while. I'm not sure why, but anyway. So yeah, to the best of my memory, as I said, these are the CDs that I first bought, the very first ones that started my collection. Uh, the first one is Scott Grimes, self-titled album. Uh, Scott Grimes is an actor. He's actually still acting today. Uh, nowadays he's in the Seth MacFarlane sci-fi series The Orville. Uh, he starred in the Critters horror movies back when he was a kid, a little bit younger than he was here in 89. And he also starred in ER for a while, about uh, 10, 15 years ago. And yes, this album is cheesy as I'll get out, but uh, he actually had a good voice as far as, you know, actors who sing go. Uh, so yeah, it was entertaining, and I'm, you know, I'm keeping it partly for sentimental reasons, but, you know, I just have a soft spot for it. What can I, what can I say? And the next one is, uh, by request, the best of John Williams with the Boston Pops Orchestra, and this is a selection of his bet favorite uh, movie themes and other compositions he did. Uh, Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, E.T., Superman, they're all on here. And it's a fantastic CD. If, if you like John Williams' movie music, um, actually this is probably out of print now, but uh, yeah, this was just a fantastic album. It's one of my favorites, obviously. And then uh, a band that I have not talked about much yet, uh, and I'm kind of surprised I haven't because they are one of my favorite bands, the Connells. Uh, this was, uh, I believe, their second album, Boylan Heights. And the story about how I got into the Connells is something really it's interesting and fascinating. I'll have to share with you in a future. Uh, uh, maybe I'll do a discography episode on these guys. These are, they're great. Uh, they're, they're kind of reminiscent of REM, although I never nearly got into, I mean, a lot, a lot of people compare them to REM, but I never got into REM nearly as much as I got into these guys. These guys are truly a sentimental favorite uh, after all these years. I've got every one of their uh, albums. And then this one I mentioned in a Backtracks uh, very recently, uh, Chameleon Days by Yanni. Uh, yeah, this was back when his uh, music actually had some life to it. It was, uh, it was interesting. I heard a song on the radio uh, when I was working at a bookstore down there, and uh, it just caught my ear for some reason and picked up the album and uh, enjoyed it and still still enjoy it to this day. And, of course, uh, one of the very first CDs I would have bought would have been a Weird Al Yankovic CD. Uh, even worse, uh, this... I'm not sure, as I said, my memory is not photographic, how can it be? But I'm pretty sure this is the first Weird Al CD that I bought. I had all those albums on cassette before this. But uh, yeah, a true classic in, in my opinion. And also, uh, the soundtrack from Star Trek IV The Voyage Home by Leonard Rosenman. Now this is not actually the same CD, unlike all the other ones, this is not actually the same CD that I first bought. This is a uh, an expanded reissue that came out a few years back. 
but uh, the cover is uh, the same. Actually, it has an interchangeable cover, uh, a two-sided, a two-covered two booklet. So this is the uh, one cover, and that's the other. This was the one that was on the original version of the album. So, yeah, not the best Star Trek score, but uh, one of my sentiment, sentimental favorites, obviously. So, so yeah, those are the first half dozen or so CDs that I ever bought. And I thought I would uh, show you a couple of quick videos of uh, my CD collection in various stages. Okay, okay, this first video is from 1995. And uh, the smaller drawer units that you uh, see on the left there uh, are full of cassettes. And the larger ones that you see on the right are full of CDs. And yes, all of those were full at this point. And I never liked these drawer units. Uh, first of all, they were made of a flimsy plastic and paperboard crap and uh, another thing about them was that they had individual slots for each and every CD and cassette and so if I bought something and I've prided myself from the beginning on alphabetizing my CDs so when I bought something that goes under L for instance what would I have to do that's right I'd have to move everything after that back one slot and that got old really really fast as you can probably imagine so uh, so yeah, I was very, very happy to uh, finally ditch those uh, stupid old drawer units for plain old shelves. Uh, and another thing you'll notice here is that um, my soundtracks back in those days, my soundtracks came first in my collection just because at the time that was what I was most into were soundtracks. And then after that were instrumental, uh, you know, jazz, new age, and classical. And then after that were the pop and rock uh, CDs and stuff. So. Uh, which is kind of interesting because now it's pretty much the exact opposite. <laughs> My uh, interests obviously changed over the years, so uh, yeah, kind of an, an interesting evolution to my my organizational paradigm, if you will. Uh, so yeah, and then the next clip we're going to see is my collection as it was in 2015, uh, just a few years ago. Now these shelving units that you see here, they actually started out as regular standard depth bookcases, uh, you know, 10 inches or 12 inches deep or whatever they were. And uh, I was, as you can imagine, after a while I was really hurting for storage space and my brother came in, saw those one day and said, I've got an idea. Take all your CDs off those shelves. And I thought, okay. So I did. We took them out to his workshop and he chopped them in half depth wise and then put, you know, finishing on them, you know, trim and backing and all that stuff on the, uh, on them and when all was said and done they were the absolute perfect depth for CDs as you can see and not only that but I had double the storage space overnight so uh, yeah my brother is just absolutely amazing and unbelievable so uh, yeah and you can see I've uh, my collections gotten so big uh, by that by at this point I had divider cards uh, for you know alphabet alphabetical and by genre and uh, you remember my massive uh, cassette collection back in uh, the first video? Yeah, this is what it dwindled down to by uh, 2015. And I actually have even fewer cassettes now. So, uh, yeah, that's an, an interesting um, flip-flop in the uh, amount of uh, each format that I had. And that is my record collection as it appeared a few years back. Uh, I, you may have seen my record collection video. Uh, it's on my channel. Uh, since then, my record collection's pretty much tripled in size. So, uh, so yeah, that is what my collection has looked like at various stages in years past. Uh, since I started collecting CDs in 1989, uh, my collection has amassed to uh, over 2,300 CDs, as I think I mentioned earlier. Uh, so it's been growing at an average of about 80 CDs per year, which is kind of unbelievable and shocking to me. Well, of course, a, a huge jump in that happened uh, just in the last few years with my uh, my acquisition of my sister's uh, CD collection. So yeah, that, that was, you know, 350 CDs right there. So anyway, I am about to show you what uh, my collection has evolved into uh, in the present day. Okay, so as you saw in my the 1995 segment of my flashback video, uh, my CD collection was basically confined to this storage unit goes all the way down to the floor and also most of this storage unit but now as you can see uh, this one is completely full well almost completely full 
but not only that, I also have CDs in the uh, in between overhead unit over here, as well as on this my latest uh, storage rack here. This one's about half full, and also these shelves here, uh, which used to hold DVDs. So yeah, my collection has grown quite a bit over the last, uh, particularly over the last few years. And actually, I've got my uh, my new stereo system is over here. I've got the uh, turntable up on top there. It's a Marantz turntable and uh, a five-disc CD changer here. Uh, I, I had to have that, and I actually use it quite a bit more than I thought I would. And I've actually got a a standalone audio CD recorder. It's a, a dual tray. It's got a playback tray and a record tray. I use that quite a bit. And then my receiver's down here. It's a Yamaha. So, But anyway, my uh, or organizational paradigm might be a little curious to some people. Whereas some people probably separate their rock and pop from their country and from their R&B and from their hip-hop and all that other stuff. I keep everything that is all or mostly vocal is kept together. So that starts uh, at the beginning of my collection. It goes down to uh, the M's start down here. And then uh, the M's resume up here on the other side and go all the way down to the Z's down here. And then, as you can see with my handy-dandy handy dandy little divider cards here, this is where the uh, all or mostly instrumental starts. And this is, you know, all, all the instrumental stuff, you know, jazz, new age, uh, classical, and all that. That goes down the A to Z artists down to here. And then up here in the in-between rack is where I keep my various artists' uh, compilations. So I've got uh, you know, all sorts of uh, things and got a few series here. Yeah, these are the um, Soundtrack for a Century uh, Sony label series that they put out back in 1999. And yeah, I took all of the... Uh, the they were originally housed in double, the, what they call the chubby CD cases. And I actually took the booklets out, so I, I keep the booklets in a separate place and transplanted them into single width CD cases just to save space. Then I've got, as you saw in my Kim's Hit Parade video, I've got the Sounds of the 70s, Super Hits of the 70s, excuse me, collection all the way over there. I've got a bunch of other stuff, some uh, homemade compilations there. And then over here is where I have the instrumental compilations. So, uh, yeah, and I have, uh, I decided to put comedy and spoken word over here. And here you can see my Weird Al Yankovic collection goes over here and then a little bit more down here. And these are actually the CDs that I have not yet listened to. I'm kind of surprised it's uh, that few right now. <laughs> it's usually a lot more than that. And then down here is where I have, uh, where I keep the soundtracks. Uh, soundtracks, movies, TV shows, uh, my Star Trek collection, uh, which I intend to do a video and probably a video series on at some point, is quite extensive. It takes up close to half of my entire soundtrack uh, library. So uh, yeah, that goes down here and then there's some soundtrack compilations and this was an interesting uh, thing that I had to reconcile how to sort them between those and the instrumental compilations. Uh, the, the, the lines kind of blur with uh, the orchestra that records them and what kind of material is on the discs and you know who's composed them and all that stuff. Uh, it's probably way too boring for you to uh, care about but anyway after the uh, soundtrack compilations are my holiday CDs. Christmas and etc. I actually have a, uh, a Thanksgiving compilation. I'm not sure how true to the holiday that is, but uh, anyway, it's there, so. So yeah, I thought maybe I'll skim over my CDs if there's anything, uh, see if there's anything that's uh, really noteworthy to talk about. Oh, uh, America, The Complete Greatest Hits, they were a uh, popular group back in the 70s, 70s, 80s. Uh, my sister enjoyed them, although I actually bought that CD myself. That was not in my sister's collection, so. Uh, and The Association. They were a great uh, folk rock group from the 60s, uh, 60s and 70s. Uh, an interesting story behind them that I might uh, point out to you at one point. Oh, actually, no, I did share it in my uh, record collection video. 
So yeah, go and watch that. Listen to the story. Uh, yeah, I got some Backstreet Boys, uh, Bare Naked Ladies. What can I say? They're a, uh, they're a not guilty pleasure of mine. And uh, here's one that uh, I've got a few examples of this, actually. Uh, a four disc Tony Bennett box set, uh, minus the box. I actually found uh, found all four CDs in the bargain bin at the local store uh, for two bucks a piece. So I figured, hey, a, a box set for four dollars, who cares if, or for eight dollars, who cares if the box isn't there? Uh, so, and then, yeah, uh, Big Country, I mentioned them in one of my Backtracks videos. Uh, got a few of their CDs. And, uh, oh, Randall Bramblett. He is a favorite artist of mine. He's kind of like Americana rock, sort of. So, yeah. Got several of his, uh, what I have, like nine of his CDs. And uh, you'll notice the, the empty space at the end of each shelf is for expansion, for when I get... Uh, New CDs added to my collection. I have room to put them alphabetically. And then we've got uh, Michael Bublé. Uh, he's uh, another artist that I like. Um, a contemporary jazz crooner. Jeff Buckley. I've actually managed to find the deluxe edition of Grace. Uh, I had never heard his album bef that album before until uh, Kyle from Track by Track turned me onto it, and I actually really enjoyed it. We've got some Ray Charles here, uh, Modern Sounds in Country and Western Music. Uh, this is an absolute classic that every, I think everybody's got to hear. Uh, and then I've got uh, see Coldplay over there on the end, continuing on the next row. The Connells, there's uh, the artist, the uh, group that I told you about. Yeah, this is where, this is my collection of Connell CDs, got every one of their albums. Uh, two disc Cream collection. Cheryl Crow and uh, Crowded House. I actually found this. I still remember where I got this. It was at uh, the Virgin Mega Store down in California. On I believe it was one. I don't know if it was my last trip there or one. Of, it was one of my last trips there. But yeah, it's a three disc set from Holland. Yeah, from uh, the Nether Netherlands. Their greatest hits album, a DVD of their videos, as well as their first album. So yeah, very cool. Uh, set there. Oh, and uh, Jamie Cullum, he's another contemporary jazz uh, singer that I really like. So yeah, I've got all of his albums. And yeah, see, I've got this here. And I've got this here. <laughs> it is uh, yeah the uh, record store that I go to in town. Uh, when they're done with these uh, advertisement posters, these, uh, what are they, three by three foot uh, display things, they put them on sale, uh, usually for ten bucks a piece. So when I find ones that I like, I pick them up, even though I don't have room to put them on my walls. Uh, as you can see here, I've got Duran Duran, Newton Faulkner. It was just, just the image of this was just too cool. I, just very, very interesting. Just, just the picture is great. And uh, Keen also. So yeah, I've, I don't know if they're too heavy to put on my ceiling. Uh, I don't have any wall space to put them. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, if I figure out a way to display them, obviously you will probably see them in a future video. So, uh, and then we're coming down here to, uh, oh, Duran Duran. And my Duran Duran starts there and ends there. See, so I've got uh, every one of their albums, as well as their uh, singles, 81 to 85, a uh, CD box set. Very awesome to have that. And then 11, you saw me, you saw the discography video I I take it, I hope. If not, it's on my channel. Go see it. Go watch it now. Uh, and then here we go into uh, E's going to the F's. The Feeling is a uh, band that I really enjoy. Uh, they've, uh, they're have they from the UK. They've got kind of a, a power pop, sort of a super tramp kind of a sound to them. Uh, really cool. Oh, and here's that uh, Newton Faulkner. You can get a bit of a better look at the uh, picture. It was just it was just too too intriguing a cover to not get a three foot by three foot uh, version of it. What can I say? Oh, and five, one of my favorite boy bands. What can I say? Got some Marvin Gaye here. Uh, his greatest hits all in the uh, 20th century millennium collection.
collection series. Uh, his two of his solo ones and one with uh, Tammy Terrell. And the Guess Who? They were one of my sister's favorite bands that I did not mention in her Kim's Greatest Hits video. And this is this was one of hers. It was a three disc Greatest Hits collection. I really enjoy this one. And then uh, here's here's one of my most recent uh, favorite, well, more recent favorites. I've known him for a few years. Uh, Wouter, Wouter Hamill. He is a Dutch jazz pop singer. Uh, kind of like Jamie Cullum, actually. And uh, yeah, found him on the web. Uh, every song that I listened to, I liked better than the last one. And uh, before you knew it, I had all of his CDs. You know, Hanson. Can't resist. Don't knock him for Mbop. They've done a whole lot better stuff since then, honestly. Take it from me. You can trust me, right? And, uh, yeah, some Jimi Hendrix here. That is Greatest Hits, and a couple from my sister's collection. Oh, Herman's Hermits. <laughs> Gotta love Hermits Herm Herman's Hermits. And then we've got Billy Idol. I've got quite a few of these icon series. I've, that's one thing I've been thinking about doing is a video of the various CD series that I have, uh, uh, you know, greatest hits series and all that. Uh, Indigo Girls. Indigo Girls. And another one of the deluxe reissues that I've got is Joe Jackson's Night and Day. Very, very good album from the 80s. Uh, check it out if you haven't yet. Michael Jackson. Etta James. Oh, Etta James. If, you, if you've never listened to Etta James, you've got to. This album particularly, At Last. Jewel, and uh, here I've got some Billy Joel down here, and my steadily growing Elton John collection. And uh, this is a guy that I'm going to have to do a video about at some point, Kavana. He was a British uh, pop singer who's kind of disappeared. I'm not sure what he's doing now. But uh, yeah, he's... In my opinion, he's, he was just underrated and should not have disappeared as quickly as he did. And uh, yeah, sorry about the light, but it's just too much of a pain to put the uh, camera light down here. Uh, yeah, I've got some uh, some Keen, Carol King. You've got to hear Carol King if you've if you're not familiar with her. That's some of the uh, Diana Krall from my sister, uh, Lady Gaga. And uh, Ben Lee is uh, another one of my not so guilty pleasures. Uh, and I don't know if you can see it in the bad lighting or not, but there's some Huey Lewis in the news down there. And well, I got some Kenny Loggins. Oh, Madonna. <laughs> My entire Madonna collection consists of uh, greatest hits and one CD single. I don't know why I don't have more Madonna. And then, uh, oh, Mamas and the Papas. I, they're a band that I really should have more of than a three-disc collection. And then, uh, there's another example of the uh, four-disc box set with no box. Uh, Johnny Mathis. He's one of my favorite classic crooners, definitely. And starting up here at the top of the second shelf, I got my pathetically small Paul McCartney collection. Uh, Michael McDonald. I got some McFly. They are a, a band from Britain from about ten years ago. They haven't recorded in several years. I, I've been wanting to do a favorite songs video of them. I probably ought to. Oh, and uh, Sarah McLaughlin, uh, another deluxe reissue I've got of hers is uh, Fumbling Towards Ecstasy. And I've got several of her CDs that were in my sister's collection. And uh, Meatloaf, uh, yeah, there's another deluxe slipcase, uh, Bad Out of Hell 2. Minute Work, one of my, one of my holy trinity of 80s bands. Uh, there's Two Hearts, Cargo, and business as usual. And then my one and only Metallica CD, s and which is phenomenal, unbelievable. You've got to hear it. Uh, they're they're my one of my brother's favorite bands. I don't know why I don't listen to them more. And you got some Mika. I really like Mika. And then somewhere in this general vicinity is my favorite album of all time, which at some point I will... Uh, spill the beans on. I don't want to uh, show my hand completely, as it were. Some Willie Nelson, Nirvana. 
In Utero and Nevermind. NRBQ, they were a band that I just kind of took a chance on at some point uh, about a year ago. They are kind of a, uh, they're a jack of all trades. They kind of mish, mishmash several genres into their music. They're pretty good. And then uh, <laughs> NSYNC. Yes, remember, life's too short to be a music snob. Uh, Paolo Nutini, he is one of my favorites, and he hasn't recorded an album in several years, and I'm hoping that we haven't seen the last from him. And uh, yes, I have some One Direction. Shut up, don't judge me. Uh, some Joan Osborne here. This is a guy that uh, has pretty much been forgotten in recent years, Owsley, a fantastic power pop singer. He only did two solo albums, but he was a uh, touring and session musician for several artists, including, I think, Bonnie Raitt. I could be wrong on that. or No, I think it's Amy Grant, I think. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, he's uh, passed away back in, I think it was, oh, what was it, 2004 or 2009? Uh, so yeah, it was a very sad day uh, that he passed away, but uh, he left behind not a lot of music, but some great, great music. Give it a try. Uh, Brad Paisley. I've got several of his albums. I think I've mentioned him. Uh, my sister liked him. Phantom Planet. Uh, these guys have kind of been forgotten in recent years, too. They were a great, another great power pop group. And I've got The Police. They're uh, two disc greatest hits, as well as Synchronicity. Uh, Elvis. This is the entirety of my Elvis Presley collection. Charlie Puth, Queen. Uh, I, I like Queen, but uh, only enough to have three greatest hits discs full of them. Got some Red Hot Chili Peppers over here. I got Blood Sugar Sex Magic, as well as Californication and One Hot Minute. I guess this is the, the Rick Rubin trilogy, as it were. Uh, another classic album from the 80s, High Infid Infidelity by REO Speedwagon. Uh, give these guys a try. And got some Kenny Rogers, Linda Ronstadt, uh, courtesy of my sister, Diana Ross, another icon CD. Rumor. This is a fantastic British singer, uh, a glorious, gorgeous voice. It reminds me a lot of uh, Karen Carpenter, although some of you may not have heard of Karen Carpenter. Hopefully you have. I've got some Santana, as well as their legacy version of Supernatural. Some Boz Skaggs, including uh, Silk Degrees, and a Two Disc Greatest Hits collection. Uh, the Script, I've got several Script albums. And I think I've got all of their albums. Uh, Brian Sitzer Orchestra. Actually, they are another band that uh, my sister actually had three of their CDs, and they only put out five, so... I decided to pick up the other two. This one is, is, is a great one. It is classical pieces rearranged in big band style or swing style. It's just, if you want something really unusual, give uh, Wolfgang's Big Night Out a try by Brian Sitzer Orchestra. Uh, oh, and uh, <laughs> William Shatner. I'm a Star Trek fan, so I have to have some William Shatner in my uh, discography. I've got three of his uh, CDs. Some Carly Simon, Paul Simon, and Simon and Garfunkel. Bessie Smith is a fantastic early jazz singer, jazz blues singer. Oh uh, yeah, I, I found this for, what was it, for three dollars or something, and it was uh, definitely a good, good purchase. Well, Dusty Springfield, Bruce Springsteen, Steely Dan, got, uh, yeah, Steely Dan goes from here over to here. Yeah, the whole, the entire Steely Dan studio album discography and uh, got the stripes got, I actually have all of their uh, at least I think all of their studio albums and all of their uh, EPs the EPs that they put out between albums uh, got a two disc sticks collection got some CDs falling over oh the Sundays Sundays were a great uh, jangle pop jangle rock group uh, just a, a beautiful lilting voice that the lead singer has. Just fantastic. Uh, James Taylor, The Essential. I've actually also got quite a few Essentials uh, CDs. I should do a video. 
I keep meaning to do a video of Greatest Hits series uh, CDs. Oh, Toto 4, another 80s classic. You've got to listen to that one. Uh, Train, my sister was a big fan of Train, so I've got uh, every album except their most recent one, which was just an absolute disaster. And uh, the Turtles anthology. <laughs> I mean, the only song of theirs that I really, really liked was Happy Together, their big hit, so I'm not sure why I got two full discs packed full of their music. Uh, I don't know. And then uh, Twisted Sister, Stay Hungry, their, their classic breakthrough album. Uh, Van Halen, Vertical Horizon. Oh, I got some uh, Rufus Wainwright. I've got most of his albums. I think I'm missing one. Yeah, this one was his oddest one. I think I meant, I think I talked about this in a video. Uh, yes, yeah, Shakespeare sonnets set to music and uh, got several guest vocalists on there. I uh, guess it's very, very interesting. Uh, he, he does, sometimes he does stuff that's a little too interesting. <laughs> Wham. <clears throat> and I've got Wham. Of course, this is a uh, the British remaster reissue, so it's got a different cover than the American one is uh, famous for. And some Robbie Williams, Wilson Phillips, a great uh, 90s vocal group. Got a couple Stevie Wonder CDs, not very many. Again, he's an artist I don't know why I don't have more of. And then I've got uh, Yaz, which is a uh, British synth pop group from the 80s. This is a very, very good album, another 80s classic. And we've got Yes, I've got 90125, and their greatest hits. My sister had this one in her collection. Young Love. This is a uh, a solo artist. I can't remember what his real name is, but uh, yeah, he put out two albums. He's kind of an inter interesting uh, music, kind of a kind of synth pop basically. But yeah, worth a listen. And uh, Will Young, the very first pop idol. Uh, this was before American Idol, um, the American version of Idol. And then we go into the instrumental stuff. I've got uh, Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Got a few of those. Uh, not as many as I've got on LP. This is, this is one of their classics, Whipped Cream. Uh, David Benoit, George Benson. I think I showed this one to you in my sister's, my uh, Kim's Greatest Hits video. Reason, it's a classic. Uh, Dave Brubeck Quartet. This is an absolute classic album. You've got to hear it. Uh, time Out. Uh, and I've got the the three disc, uh, two CD, one DVD collector's edition, and then the sequel album, Time Further Out. It's just he did some just great stuff with time signatures that had never been done before, and it was just phenomenal. And uh, Miles Davis, I've, I'm just dipping my toes into Miles Davis, but I decided to spring for the uh, deluxe edition of Kind of Blue. And it's and this is another artist who I have come on, get in there. Who I have a boxed set without the box. This is a four disc uh CD set here. The Columbia Years. And I've fallen into some of the uh the classical pop crossover stuff like uh David Garrett. see this here, David Garrett. I've got Piano Guys a little bit further down the uh, line here. Uh, Boney James, I think I mentioned him in my Kim's Greatest Hits. Uh, she had like seven or eight of his albums and I've been slowly accumulating the missing ones. Oh, <laughs> Liberace. What the hell, right? Oh, here's uh, the piano guys. Uh, they're they're coming out with a new one actually this week, or maybe they actually came out with it last week. Oh, and Tito Puente. Here's a yet another deluxe slipcase, uh, Dance Mania. It's got both Dance Mania albums. It's classic Latin jazz from the 50s, I think. And then you've heard me talk about the Rippingtons, a f personal favorite of mine. My Rippington CDs start there, continue on down here, all the way through to here. Unless you also count a collection that I made, a three-disc compilation 
uh, several years ago. Yes, I, I, it's one thing I really enjoy doing is making mixed CDs uh, and designing the artwork. I, I may have to show you some of the ones that I've made over the years. Uh, and David Sanborn, Jake Shimabukuro, he's a fantastic ukulele artist, and Ravi Shankar, an Indian sitar master. Uh, his stuff is really interesting to listen to. And then, yeah, we come down to the end of my uh, instrumental, jazz, classical, etc. And yeah, as I mentioned in the other video, uh, I used to be way into soundtracks back when I first started collecting CDs, but uh, not quite so much anymore. But I do still have a pretty good uh, assortment of soundtracks. Uh, you remember Baby Driver, my favorite album from last year. Back to the Future. Uh, Big, this is one that's uh, was a limited edition uh, score album. I, I, I love the movie, and uh, of course, when I love the movie, I tend to also love the music. Uh, this is an 80s movie that was really cool. It was called Daryl. And uh, yeah, you should check it out at some point. It's, it's, it looks kind of cheesy and dated now, but it was a fun movie. And one of my favorite sci-fi movies from when I was a kid, The Black Hole. It, this, the story behind this is really interesting because it was the first digitally recorded soundtrack uh, from, for a movie. Unfortunately, for some reason, the... Uh, it was never released on CD until, I believe it was, it was 2014? No, 2011. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was recorded with, uh, you know, back then in 19, I think it was, this was 79. Uh, digital recording techniques were just beginning, and so uh, by the time they were going to do a CD, they had to figure out how to extract the digital files, because they were not in any kind of a, uh, in any format that was easily accessible present day. So just the liner notes in that CD just talk about the entire story. And it was, it's just really fascinating to, to, to read. And then uh, John Williams, one of my favorite composers, E.T., one of his best scores ever. And oh yeah, Ghostbusters, I have both the original soundtrack, one of my favorite movies when I was a kid, as well as the soundtrack from the reboot movie recently and Guardians of the Galaxy both volumes of that even though I've only seen the first movie and then we have the Indiana Jones soundtrack collection all four Indiana Jones movies uh, the first two of which had been until this time very hard to find on CD so yeah, I was just very overjoyed to get that that was some of my favorite soundtrack music I've also got a fair share of uh, TV soundtracks. Uh, oh, and the movie soundtrack you've seen recently, Love, Simon. Uh, the Muppet Show, 90210. The OC. So I've got a fair share of uh, TV soundtracks in here as well. Pushing Daisies, that was a fun TV show. Uh, the, the concept is way too hard to explain, but uh, it was very interesting. And uh, kind of the simil same thing with Quantum Leap, uh, kind of a tough concept to wrap your head around, at least for some people. But uh, yeah, one of my favorite TV shows of all time. And another one of my favorites, uh, more recent though, Shameless. Sequest, DSV, that was a, a TV show. It was kind of like a an undersea version of Star Trek. It was, it was fascinating. The, the first season was excellent. Uh, they decided to uh, <laughs> revamp it in the second season, and it was awful. Uh, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. I uh, got the uh, Danny Elfman scores for those. And then my uh, <laughs> my Star Trek starts right here. Continues down here through the various TV shows and movies. And ends here with a tribute CD. So yeah, all that is Star Trek music. You think I like Star Trek? Maybe? Oh, and I got some uh, some Star Wars down here. And then a uh, another very nice uh, jewel in my collection, the Superman, Superman the Music, from the first four Superman movies, the Christopher Reeve movies. 
as well as some music from an animated series uh, from uh, shortly after that. And then time after time, a, a great sci-fi movie from 1979, uh, the score from that. And Titanic, I have the four disc box set that they put out uh, for the, what, the 15th anniversary of the movie, I think. And Tron got the original soundtrack from the original film and from Tron Legacy. And then, yeah, we get into the soundtrack collections of various sorts. And then the holiday CDs, which I will spare you the time of going through those. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little tour of my CD collection. And I thought since I started out with some of the very first CDs I bought, I would end with by showing you very quickly a couple of the most recent CDs I bought, some of which will probably end up in videos very soon. Uh, one of them is a CD that truly moved me, uh, Barbara Streisand's most recent album, Walls. It was absolutely fantastic. I'm kind of surprised I haven't reviewed it uh, before now. It just, it just, as I said, it really, really moved me, and uh, yeah, you should definitely check it out if you haven't yet. And another one I got is actually not just one CD, but uh, several. I got it for my birthday, actually. It is the Eagles Legacy box set. Uh, as you know, my sister was a, uh, a fan of the Eagles. She had a few of their CDs in her collection, and I actually had their Greatest Hits album and uh, one other one. And so I had about half their discography by the time uh, I had my sister's CDs. And so I was just about to start collecting the rest of their CDs that I didn't have, and then I saw the announcement for this. Uh, so I decided what the heck, uh, it's got a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't have had otherwise. It's got a disc of rarities and b-sides. It's also got all of their live albums, which I don't normally, I'm just not normally a live album person. Uh, but, and it's also got two concert films, one on DVD and one on Blu-ray. So it's like, I decided, yeah, I'll go ahead and ask for this for my birthday. Will, will I get it? Who knows, but I did, so yeah. And yeah, I'm probably going to be doing a, uh, an Eagle Spotlight in a video sometime soon, so. Uh, yeah, possibly an al album ranking, so stay tuned for that. So uh, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, I enjoyed showing it to you. Uh, hopefully it didn't sound like I was bragging about my CDs. I, I'm not one to brag, it's just, you know, this is the collection that I have, and I at least I assumed you guys wanted to see it. So, uh, but anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. What's your CD collection like? How many CDs do you have? Uh, what kind of stuff do you have in it? Um, let me know in the comments. And again, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, see you again real soon. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.